Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Gemma Shackleton and I'm the marketing manager for Metrosil, a range of silicon carbide varistors manufactured by m &I Materials in Manchester, UK. Before we get started with today's session, let me tell you what we'll be covering in the next 20 to 30 minutes. Silicon carbide varistors, also referred to as nonlinear resistors, are used to protect electrical networks around the world. Today, we'll outline exactly where these varistors are used in a power network and why they shouldn't be overlooked when it comes to overvoltage protection. We'll also demonstrate the huge difference that manufacturing makes when it comes to varistor reliability and introduce you to some projects that have put their trust in metrosol protection. Before I introduce you to our speakers, let me quickly cover some housekeeping rules for today. If you are joining us by phone, may I ask that you mute your microphone now. We'll be taking questions at the end of the session, which will be in about 20 minutes time. You can submit questions to us at any point during the webinar via the chat window. To open the chat window, just click the red, the red button with the arrow in the top right of your screen. Type your question into the window and then press send. We'll try to get through all of your inquiries during today's session. If we don't, we'll reply individually by email. Now that I've gone through what we'll be covering today and some housekeeping rules, let me introduce you to our speakers. First up is Dominic Cole, our commercial manager for specialty products at MI Materials. A number of you will no doubt met Dom. He spends a lot of his time traveling, developing key partnerships with leading relay and substation OEMs. Also joining us today is Ian Rowley. Ian is our product development manager for Metrosil and has been instrumental in launching a number of innovations, including the Metrosil 8000 series and our high energy test laboratory, also known as HETL. Just like Dom, Ian travels to many clients, especially our hydropower clients within China. Our final speaker is Dr. Tom Galvin. Tom recently completed his PhD in materials engineering which was based on structural carbide materials for the nuclear industry. He's also undertaken various research pieces at the University of Sheffield, including producing a master sintering curve for Metrosil and analysing Metrosil impedance data. I'll now hand you over to Dom, who will get us underway. Thanks, Gemma. So before we discuss um, how Metrosil protects against over voltages, Let's um, have a look at how they can occur in the first place. So I'm sure you're all aware of what an over voltage is and how it occurs. This slide sets the scene for today's webinar. When a voltage in a circuit or part of it is raised above its upper design limit, this is known as an over voltage or a temporary or transient over voltage. A TOV in a power network system can lead to serious damage resulting in hazardous events or potentially causing power outages. Two main causes of overvoltage are lightning, as shown in the slide there, and impulse switching. Other forms, such as back EMS from large coils, could also be considered. To prevent power cuts and damage to equipment, a voltage limiting device, such as a Metrosil varistor, should be utilised. A varistor is a voltage dependent resistor and at a predetermined voltage, Metrosil switches on, thus diverting the over voltage. In a power network, this ensures that the lights are kept on, power keeps flowing from homes through to hospitals. As seen here on the right, the Metrosil switch on or clamping voltage is 800 volts. When placed in a circuit, a Metrosil varistor remains passive or non-conducting. That's until its predetermined voltage is reached. And in this example, it prevents a 4.95 kV over voltage. The, the, the voltage is automatically limited to 800 volts here. Now let's talk about Metrosil in a bit more detail. So how do silicon carbide varistors actually work? And for this, I'll hand over to our material scientist, Dr. Tom Galvin. Thanks, Tom. So, Metrosil relies upon the semiconducting nature of silicon carbide itself to protect against over voltages. Silicon carbide can operate reliably at much higher voltages and energies than silicon 
and has been hailed as the successor to silicon as a material for power electronic components. Metrosil varistas are made of silicon carbide crystals and some additives to fine tune the electrical properties, both held in an insulating ceramic matrix. A conductive coating is applied to the faces of the disc to ensure excellent electrical contact in an assembly. The silicon carbide grains themselves provide the varista behavior. Effectively, they have a high resistance at low voltage, which drops as the voltage increases. At the specified clamping voltage, they have a very low effective resistance, which squashes the overvoltage and dissipates the energy by allowing high current flow. These two diagrams show a typical application for a metrosil that is always in circuit. Under normal operation, the voltage across the metrosil is very low, 50 volts in this case. The metrosil presents a high resistance, and so the leakage current through it is also very low. In the event of an overvoltage, the voltage climbs across the metrosil and its effective resistance lowers, letting more current through and dissipating the excess energy while keeping the voltage down to acceptable levels. Without a metrosil here, the overvoltage could increase to several kilovolts, causing damage to insulation or sensitive equipment. I'll pass you back to Dom now, who will introduce some of our applications. What does a metrosil protect then? Historically, we've got four main applications, but we're certainly not limited to those. The first is generated de excitation, where energy stored in electromagnetic field winding needs to be discharged really safely and quickly. And my uh, colleague Ian will talk about those uh, projects a bit later on. Secondly, relay protection, used across high impedance relays or REF, residual earth fault schemes. Third, current transformer protection where a secondary winding must be protected from an open circuit, and fourth, switchgear protection. These electrical network applications have IEEE recommended practices and regulations which specify the use of baristas. However, there are many other applications where metrosil is used to stop over voltage and limit current surges. An example of some of the IEEE regulations are 14.1.6, that's the recommended practice for the protection of synchronous machines. This recommends silicon carbide varistas for fast, high energy discharge for critical protection of generator systems. DLT843-2010 is a Chinese power system standard maintaining overvoltage protection. IEEE C5713 is an instrument transformer standard which covers CT protection, and we'll have a bit more on that later. So Metrosil ensures these standards and practices are met. Metrosil products are recommended by large electrical OEMs in technical publications, such as Professor Ji Cheng Li's reference book, shown on the right. Now back to Tom, a look at the differences between baristas and other voltage limiting devices. So uh, most of you are probably familiar with resistance uh, and Ohm's law v equals IR. In most cases, R is a fixed quantity that expresses the relationship between current flow and voltage across the device. For a linear resistor, double the current and the voltage doubles as well. With a metrosil, Ohm's law doesn't apply and we don't have a fixed resistance. Instead, we follow a power law. V equals C times I to the power of beta, where C and beta are characteristic parameters of the metrosil. The effect of this is that when you double the current, the voltage doesn't double, and in fact only raises slightly. For a relay metrosil, you would need more than 10 times the current to double the voltage across it. Most overvoltages are transient events with finite energy and simply dissipate this energy into the metrosil long before such high currents can be achieved. This keeps the voltage down, and also as the second graph shows, can dissipate energy much faster than a linear resistor. So to quickly summarize, metrosil varistas are faster at discharg discharging stored energy and overvoltages. They are safer because they quickly limit overvoltages as soon as they occur, and they're typically smaller than a comparable linear protection system. Finally, they are the smarter choice because they do this all automatically without the need for a separate detection system. Metrosil is also the smarter and safer choice because of our stringent testing standards. We test every single metrosil disc for its voltage and current relationship. 
Further, further to this, our excitation units are tested to withstand worst case energy discharge conditions in our unique high energy test lab, more on that later. Our current transformer protection units are tested and conditioned across a real in-house current transformer that can be set to open circuit. And finally, our relay disks are all impulse tested and flash tested to ensure no dangerous arcing occurs during an over voltage. I'll hand you back to Dom now so that he can talk you through our philosophy, basically what makes us different to other varista manufacturers out there. Thanks for that, Tom. So we stand by three values at Metrosil, and they all come together ensuring we deliver reliable protection to our customers. These three values are expertise, reliability, and innovation. Expertise is at the very heart of Metrosil. We were originally manufactured by Metropolitan Vickers, a major UK powerhouse in the 30s and 40s. We've retained this specialist knowledge since then and built heavily on it, ensuring that our products meet the needs of today's industry. Reliability, that's the result of our expertise. We always go the extra mile to assure our customers that Metrosil over voltage protection will perform as expected. We're able to do this with in-house testing and careful device matching. We'll come on to that a little bit sooner. Metrosil has always innovated. Since manufacturing began in 1937, Metrosils have served so many applications. This has meant that product variations have been introduced from assembly structures to custom geometries, disc sizes and thicknesses. Our latest innovations include the 8000 series, HETL, our high energy test laboratory, and the event monitor, an optional electronic solution that enables condition monitoring of our 8000 series varistas. These three values make a difference to how we operate and we constantly ensure that we follow them. Our unique manufacturing processes also make a difference, and I'll let Tom explain that. So if we break our manufacturing process down into simple stages, we can demonstrate the real difference that Metrosil manufacturing makes when it comes to over voltage protection. First, we mix silicon carbide with a ceramic binder and additives, with each recipe being tuned to meet customer requirements. Then the discs are pressed, sintered at high temperatures, and the faces are metallized. So far, all of that is a fairly typical manufacturing process. What sets us apart, however, are the next two steps. We match our discs to tight specifications so that everything in an assembly shares the current and energy equally. This prevents some discs from taking more than their share and improves the longevity of the unit in the field. These processes are ISO and OEM audited. Our final stage, as mentioned before, is our rigorous testing. Here I'd like to take a closer look at something very special and unique to Metrosil, Kettle, our high energy test laboratory, which allows us to put our excitation protection assemblies through the worst case scenario when it comes to an over voltage. If a customer tells us the maximum current and energy values and the protection voltage, we can demonstrate that the unit can handle the energy while keeping the voltage at or below the safe maximum. Our manufacturing process as a whole serves us well when it comes to quality control. Not only are we audited by ISO auditors, we are also audited by the OEMs who visit our factory, including ABB, GE and Siemens. We were recently audited by ABB, who awarded us ABB critical supplier status, and also by GE, who acknowledged us as a class A supplier. I'll pass you over to Ian now so that he can tell you a bit more about HETL, as he played a major role in the commissioning of it. Uh, thanks, Tom. Um, our High Energy Test Laboratory, or HETL for short, was a major project for me when it was commissioned in 2016. <clears throat> the test laboratory was developed in direct response to market needs, as the demands on our users became ever more onerous. Um, we had service level agreements for a driver, as were insurance companies, demanding to understand how do we know that everything is working to specification. So we needed a way to show that our units met specification under real world conditions with real high energy voltage and current pulses. Hetl is the result and the response from our customers ever since has been extremely positive. With Hetl, our customers are assured that their metro solicitor will protect as intended. Hetl is rated up to 2000 volts, 8000 amps and two megajoules. With a choice of test waveforms, square wave, voltage controlled or current controlled and inductive discharge, 
we're able to offer 100% testing of metrosil assemblies in-house. As Tom mentioned, heckle testing is the last stage of our manufacturing process. This means that before a barista assembly is even installed on site, we can prove to our customers that it will perform as expected. Each barista assembly comes with its own test certificate, which shows exactly how the assembly has performed during an over-voltage, over-current event. And finally, also during testing, we assess the thermal balance of the assemblies, as this is also an important element of reliable operation. So now we've shown the superiority of car silicon carbide varistas as a whole, and also the importance of manufacturing when it comes to assuring reliability. Let's take a look at some major projects where Metrosil is actually used. So our largest application is also the largest, is the world's biggest power station, the Three Gorges Dam, which is located on the Yangtze River in China. Its total capacity is 22 and a half gigawatts. We've been protecting this hydropower station for more than 20 years. So this has heightened Metrosil's reputation in China, so much so that their large hydropower plants now choose Metrosil's for the excitation as standard. Now this brings me on to our most recent project. The Bahattan Dam is a large hydroelectric dam currently under construction on the Yangtze River also. Its total capacity is 16 gigawatts. It will be the world's largest, second largest power station after the Three Gorges Dam and will be the first to use a 1,000 megawatt hydro turbine generator. It's installed in Metrosource now and expected to be fully operational by 2022. Along with Manhattan, there are three other projects, all located on the same Yangtze River, which will have a combined install capacity of 53 gigawatts. So these are just a few of the hundreds of dams and power stations on which Metrosource are installed. Our final example takes us to the border of Brazil and Paraguay. It tied at 14 gigawatts is the world's third largest hydroelectric project after Three Gorges and Manhattan. We're also used on the largest nuclear power generators as well as on the latest high, latest high efficiency fossil fuel power stations. There are many other examples I could give, but these power stations show the trust that's put into our products, our manufacturing processes and our team. Just to be more specific, you might like to see what a Metrosil installation actually looks like. So the insert image is an example of some installed Metrosil 8000 series units. <coughs> Due to their unique design, these assemblies are easy to install and take up less, less cabinet space. So the, the, the largest infrastructure projects in the world rely on us to protect their assets. And thanks to our expertise, reliability and innovation, we ensure that protection is guaranteed at all times. Of course, we have similar accolades for our relay and CTBU products, which Dom can now tell you more about. Over the years, we've literally manufactured and have in service millions of uh, Metrosil um, relay protection baristas and Metrosil CTPUs, current transformer protection units, shipping worldwide to national grids, district network operators, utilities and direct OEMs. The next two slides illustrate a case study for each one. UK Power Networks, a London-based district network operator, standardise their asset protection with high impedance relay schemes. They use Metrosil relay protection baristas throughout, including the large St John's Wood project, a 400 kV GIS scheme that supplies 15 grid and primary substations right throughout London. This shows a small selection of the worldwide utilities that use Metrosil CTPUs, current transformer protection units, directly across the secondary windings of metering and protection CTs. We supply Metrosil CTPUs, our pre-wired protection cabinets as well to these companies and others around the world, enabling them to adhere to IEEE C5713 instrument transformers, which I touched on earlier. And here's a direct quote from section 6.7.1, basically saying that Voltage limiting devices, such as a varista, must be provided on the CT secondary to protect against dangerous crest voltages in an open circuit condition.
So to summarize, Metrosil silicon carbide varistors are robust, high energy devices, which can be used to protect generator windings, relays, current transformers, as well as any plant or other equipment that needs an over voltage protection device. As we've discovered, Metrosils are faster, safer, smaller and smarter and have a higher energy capacity than a linear resistor, remaining passive until needed. Metrosil is the original protection device approved by OEMs worldwide. We 100% routinely test our varistors to their full ratings and undertake thermal and current matching to ensure that their integrity. So to sum up, this delivers peace of mind to protection engineers and illustrates why Metrosil is trusted to protect such prestigious projects. Thanks for that, Dom. And thanks to those of you that have submitted questions to us. I've selected three here for Dom, Tom and Ian. Uh, the first one I'll put forward to you, Tom, is a question from Callum, who's a senior design engineer. And Callum has asked, why not use metal oxide varistors? Uh, okay, thanks. Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. So uh, metal oxide varistors or MOVs um, are probably the, the kind of varistor that you're most familiar with. Um, and although they're very good for high current applications, they actually have quite poor performance when it comes to high energy capacity. Um, they can tend to explode open circuit, which can cause damage to your coil uh, or the protection cabinet they're in. Um, whereas uh, that's not a problem for silicon carbide varistors. Uh, MOVs also tend to degrade every time they're hit, which means you have to keep track uh, with a surge counter. Uh, and again, this isn't a problem for silicon carbide uh, high energy varistors. Perfect. Thanks, Tom. Uh, Dom, the next question I've picked out is CT related, so I'll put this forward to you. It's from an electrical engineer called Jake, and he has asked, is it true that a gas discharge tube can also provide over voltage protection of secondary CT windings? Uh, yeah, that's that's true. A gas discharge tube can be used as an effective um, over voltage device. Um, in fact, we've we've tested a few of them and compared those to uh, Metrosil CTPUs and subjecting both of them to a range of over voltages in our lab. And we found that the uh, firing voltage, uh, that's the equivalent to a Metrosil's clamping voltage, um, to degrade. If I remember, it was about five over voltages. Um, whereas, um, as, as Tom mentioned, uh, uh, silicon carbide doesn't degrade. Um, seem to remember also we, we we measured a lot of electromagnetic RF noise on each firing as well. So we were concerned that um, in a substation that could potentially affect numeric relays. Um, we also have a technical paper on this, um, which was given at a DPSP event a few years ago. Um, so we can make that available to, uh, to to Jake if he's interested in, in getting the paper. That'd be great. Thanks, Tom. Uh, if anyone else would like to receive a copy of this paper, uh, please just let us know through the chat window and we'll make sure that a copy is emailed to you. And Ian, uh, just one final question. So I'll put that forward to you. Uh, it's from Shannon, a power station engineer, and she has asked, which is better, a permanently connected design or a switched in varistor system? Oh, thanks, Gemma. Yes, it looks very simple and obvious to connect a varistor directly across a circuit to be protected. However, a silicon carbide varistor leaks a small amount of current when permanently connected. The problem with this is it heats up the varistor so it can't absorb as much energy as initially planned, as, as it's already at a raised temperature. Now, there is a way around this by using a varistor with a very high turn on or knee voltage, but often this is too high a voltage to protect the rotor insulation. So that's not always a solution. So the majority of designs that protect and generate rotors utilize a switched in design. This involves the use of a thyristor or SCR device with a voltage detection circuit, which is activated when an over voltage is detected. Thus, the varistors don't have to carry any, carry any current at all. Uh, when they're not in use and they remain at ambient temperature. So they've got a full uh, energy absorption capability protected. Um, and I hope that all makes sense. That's great. Thanks, Ian. And thanks, guys. Uh, unfortunately, we've run into the end of the session now, and that's all that we can cover question-wise. For those of you that didn't receive an answer to a question you submitted, uh, don't worry, we've received them all, and we'll come back to you directly. 
However, if you do think of something to ask later today or even next week, please feel free to take down Dom, Ian and Tom's contact details and then you can drop them an email at any time. But also, if there's a topic that you'd like us to cover in a future webinar, please do let us know. Uh, we'll do our best to put a session together. Thanks again to all of you for taking the time to be with us today. We hope that you found the session useful and informative. Please keep safe and look out for details of our next webinar. We hope to see you there too.